So this is quite a night in the uh, counter-jihad movement in Los Angeles, would you say? It's a fantastic night. Hearing Wilders was amazing. And he having heroes like Phil Haney and David Horowitz being recognized by an organization like this is important. It's part of the moment that we're living in right now, the moment where we're fighting back, where we're taking back what's ours. David Horowitz was really recognized by this association, a, 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 a conservative group. Why doesn't he have more a recognition within the American Jewish establishment? Well, the American Jewish establishment is unfortunately reflexively liberal. I don't think anybody is shocked about that or confused about that. This is an establishment that believes in bringing more Syrians into the United States to bomb synagogues. So frankly, these people are out of their minds. So when American Jews are uh, opposing uh, Trump, what would uh, life like under Clinton have been with, with regard to uh, Muslim immigrants from the Middle East? I know things would have been far worse for Israel, they'd be far, far worse for Jews in America. But again, the establishment really does not care very much about that. It has its own agendas. It cares very little for the lives of ordinary Jews. And frankly, nobody voted for these people. They're not accountable to anybody and they shouldn't be considered the Jewish leadership. President Trump went to Saudi Arabia to enlist them in, in his Sunni coalition against uh, terrorism. They're promoting the Wahhabism through the Western mosques. Does he know this? Well, he's trying to deal with the moderate Al-Qaeda against the extremist ISIS, to put it uh, mildly. We're talking about the people. The Sunni coalition consists of countries that are terror sponsors. Qatar was really uh, complicit and Al-Qaeda was complicit in September 11th. The Saudis are some of the world's biggest terrorism fundraisers. So it's nice that President Trump is going down there and he's talking about how Hamas and Al-Qaeda and ISIS are all the same. You know, it's time for the Saudis to actually get on board with that. And I don't think that's happening anytime soon. So they need to be held accountable. But the Saudi, what they say, the Arab peace plan that Obama is trying to bring to Israel has already been rejected on its uh, deficits. The peace plan, any peace plan with terrorists is ultimately a dead end. And it's time for us to realize that we don't negotiate with terrorists. This is a principle we used to have. We need to take it back again in Israel, in America, anywhere else. We do not negotiate with terrorists. Are the Arabs setting Israel up to look bad for rejecting their peace plan and making it seem like the Palestinians are again the Zionists' victims? That's the usual game, so they want to distract attention from their problems and blame Israel for it. Instability in the Middle East is always Israel's fault. The Shiites and the Sunnis wouldn't be killing each other if it wasn't for Israel and the Palestinians, and so on and so forth. It's the same song and dance. It's the same scam. Hopefully Trump is going to see through it. How do you feel about the uh, Jewish protesting uh, Trump's campaign promises about moving the uh, embassy and the, uh, the, the speech not mentioning Jews on Holocaust Remembrance Day. Is there an overreaction on the part of Jewish America? Well, I think those are two different issues. So on the one hand, they were trying to exploit anti-Semitism while ignoring anti-Semitism from their own allies, including Linda Sarsour. On the other hand, you have a legitimate question about moving the embassy to Yerushalayim. The embassy should be moved to Jerusalem. Uh, Trump promised to do that. Uh, we're talking now about a 2020 date. That's a bit belated. So I think Jews should be, uh, and I won't give it to evangelical Christians and Americans in general who voted for Trump, should be talking about getting campaign promises fulfilled. That's a legitimate thing. But if uh, the Palestinians are going to start another intifada, when, uh, when that em embassy is moved, does the timing matter? Does he need to do it now? The bottom line is if they want to start Intifada, they're going to start Intifada. One of the greatest hoaxes and myths is that the second Intifada began because Sharon uh, made a little trip to the Temple Mount. In fact, we know that they were planning it beforehand. They used that as an excuse. So they don't need an excuse to kill Jews. They don't need an excuse for an Intifada. And it's unfortunate that too many Jews who are pro-Israel are falling for this.